Spring lock failures suck. They're the worst. They're painful, they cause messes, and you know the whole death thing. And the association with William Afton or, or Spring Trap or whatever. But what's the worst things about one? That whether it be in real life if it happened or if it's just in universe. That's what we're exploring today. So let's do it. And be sure you let me know down in the comments what job you'd want at a real Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And at 10, moisture sensitive. One of the things that I find to be the absolute dumbest thing about not only these damned suits, but also the FNAF series in general, is how stupid it is that the spring lock mechanisms inside the spring lock suits fail with moisture. Sure, it explains why William gets spring locked because the room was dripping and whatever, the ceiling was leaking, and it makes everyone confused with Crying Child because he was crying. Despite that not being a spring lock failure, everyone thought it was because he was crying and, you know, moisture. But in actual practice, that is a horribly flawed mechanic. Like, if me breathing and sweating is going to make the metal bits snap on me, why would I do it in a hot ass robotic suit? That seems like a horrible and stupid idea. Like, Yes, okay, put me in a hot and sweaty environment that gets me killed if it gets wet. That's not a liability at all. I get sweaty wearing my freaking Doctor Strange costume, okay? Imagine a giant suit full of metal, okay? That would also be heavy as hell to walk around in too, only making the sweating worse. In a nine designer. You see, there are a decent amount of people that for some reason think that these spring lock suits were made with pure intentions by William Afton. <laughs> this kind of goes hand in hand with the idea that William started killing after losing his kids, but we know that that's not the case. Since thanks to the fast facts found in FNAF AR's files, we know that the fun time animatronics were some of the first ones ever made, and considering the abilities of Baby and her comrades, we know that they were made in order to kill. Meaning that even if the spring lock animatronics were the very first animatronics ever, it's reasonable to assume that they were also designed with death in mind, which explains multiple things. But honestly, if William made the fun times with death in mind, it's likely that he did the same with the spring locks, you get me? And and if you think that a suit that can snap at a moment's notice and shove pounds of metal, bars, cogs, gears, and chains, and more into the same space as your body would be made with pure intentions, you should stop watching these videos and go to a therapist. Seriously. I have a number. In at 8, no bonus. The spring lock mechanism is probably the most intuitive thing that FNAF's world invented. The ability to move robotic parts out of the way enough for a human to fit inside is nuts. And while it may be dangerous, we also drive over 100 kilometers or miles or whatever per hour in huge metal death boxes, so we can't necessarily complain about it. Um, and while yes, they have their faults, there is nothing compared to the ability to be both animatronic and suit. That's an incredible feat of technology, and I'm, I'm sure they play into it with the marketing. Like, I mean, we hear the foam guy tapes from FNAF 3 talking about these things, okay? And he never mentions a bonus or anything like that for you risking your life with one of these damn suits. And even if you end up getting spring locked, there doesn't really seem to be any compensation package for your loved ones. Hell, if you die, you may not even get your severance. Eh, actually, maybe that's why they do it. Your family can file a lawsuit since, you know, you died on the job, but that's a lengthy court battle against a massive company with a serial killer who has yet to to be caught at the front lines. It's not really gonna do much good for your fam. Uh, so the fact that you don't get a bonus if you get in one of these suits, let alone get spring locked, no thanks. It's a red flag. Swipe left. And it's seven required. The spring lock suits themselves are an occupational hazard that they didn't really need to create. Like these things are hella deadly and both William and Henry allow for their employees to wear them. Like, goddamn, okay? Just, like, just make a separate suit for the animatronic characters. For, like, for the employees, okay? Like, the people who run your business. You know, they are the ones who make you the money, so, you know, they don't end up dying from robotic parts replacing their internal organs. OSHA would have been all over these goddamn suits if it was real in this universe, but apparently I guess it's not. Uh, and honestly, it's probably required by your contract to wear these suits at work. And if you refuse, you're probably gonna get fired, especially considering how they started getting ready to fire Jeremy because he saw a glitch trap in Help Wanted. So, why wouldn't they fire you for not wearing your suit if it's in your contract? Even if you claim it was to protect your life, they'd find another reason that you couldn't really fight against, so. Especially, you know, when a serial killer is the CEO. And it's six implications. Now, while the term spring lock is used in real life, it's totally different from the actual FNAF mechanism. I'm certain most of you got the whole spring locks are real line from spring locks and you, how not to die remastered. It's a thread on the FNAF wiki. 
However, actual spring locks are just locks that use springs, okay? From my research, what I gathered is that a spring lock in real life is in simplest terms a spring lock. It's like if your front door's deadbolt was on a spring. Every other instance talking about real spring locks or just ends up bringing you back or quotes this page. So it's kind of circular logic, okay? You can't use evidence within the thing that you're trying to prove as proof that it is real. It's like plugging a power bar into itself. It doesn't work. You can't use the same article to prove that spring locks are real, okay? Because they're not. At least their game form isn't. But if the spring lock failure was real, I think the implications of like all of this being real in general is like one of the worst things. You get it? Like it, it's definitely in the top 10. Get it? It's a little meta content joke for you because this is a top 10 list. It's in the top 10. Halfway through into number five, comments. I've mentioned this in previous videos, mostly to explain why there won't ever be an actual real FNAF restaurant that you'll be able to walk into, and it still remains true since we're only getting a virtual diner that you can only order online. However, I think that one of the worst things still, and especially when it comes to these suits, is the goddamn comments about them. You want to know a comment that I saw yesterday? Well, yesterday for me as I was writing this. Wednesday for you. Okay, I just I saw someone say that they want to be spring locked. What? Why? Why would you want to be spring locked? Do you know how messed up that is? You're saying that you want to be killed by this thing? Because there there's some hotlines that you should call. Like why on sweet heaven's earth would you want to be spring locked? Do you know how absolutely agonizingly painful that would be? That would be one of the worst things imaginable, okay? Holy sweet lord baby Jesus W Christ. That would be one of the worst ways to go, if not the worst way. Uh, at least like as far as like actually could happen goes, I think at least, okay? Because like a volcano would suck, but it's a bit unrealistic. It, it's a bad idea, okay? Stop doing this. Stop saying this. Okay, talk to a doctor. And in for Afton, I talked about how the implications would apply to like how everything in FNAF would have happened in real life if one of these was real, but one of the worst implications would be that Afton was real. This man has caused me enough pain and suffering already. I don't need him to be like an actual person, especially considering how Springtrap would be set loose next year and then everything after it would happen. This channel would probably be a true crime channel and not a gaming channel. I'd probably have tried proving it myself and maybe even become a PI so that I can do so. But straight up, this man has already caused me enough grief and suffering and, and loss and tears of, of pain at night in my life and it's made me lose enough of it already to him so yeah him being real would just be the worst thing that I can imagine for me uh, however that's only if the spring lock failure thing was also real there are worse things for people in the FNAF universe though um, not in real life such as in at three paperwork one of the worst things for the survivors after a spring lock failure has to be the paperwork that is associated with it cuz goddamn someone dying in your building is one thing someone dying in your building because of something in your building is another and then add on to that the fact that they were your employee and probably forced into that suit without like because of their contract and you'll be filing reports until you have to retire okay especially because one mistake on those papers means like even more paperwork and I don't really know anyone who likes to do paperwork personally I hate it but that's also because my ADHD makes me like it makes it unbearable uh, for me honestly like it's even tough to write scripts sometimes but I mean I eventually I have to but like that that's where my brain thrives you know in that stressful environment which is not good for my health but if it was that kind of paperwork um, I would honestly just quit because there was no way in hell that I would even want to attempt to keep my focus on that um, when I can just scroll through TikTok or YouTube instead so yeah no thanks but ultimately in number two replaced Oh yeah, don't forget your bones being replaced with metal ones, yeah. Like sure, there's there's surgery for people who need repairs or replacements, okay? I think like hip replacements are probably the most common actually. However, uh, those have whole processes behind them to ensure a fast recovery and you know, survival, not being infected. All of a sudden being shoved full of metal bones where normal ones used to be, uh, that's, that's a guaranteed infection at the very least, especially considering how, you know, your normal bones have to go somewhere else. Uh, and whether they're just crushed and then spread out inside you or just pushed out the other side, you're going to be in a hell of a lot of pain. Uh, plus, you know, probably not alive, uh, which I guess is a good thing. 
since you won't really have to deal with the intense pain for too long, hopefully. Um, but this actually makes me think, if you replace all of your bones with metal ones, are you still you? Is this like a ship of Theseus moment? Am I about to have the, like a WandaVision finale? Or like, are we just our brain? And if we are our brain, does that mean that if we, if we have a brain transplant, do we become another person despite it still being my body? And does that mean that we're just like a brain piloting a bone mech with meat armor? Oh no, existential crisis. And finally, in a number one, death. I mean, don't get me wrong, okay? But the first, the, wor the worst thing about a springlock failure has to be the whole death part, right? It, ignore my mumbling. I mean, honestly, okay, it's, it's obviously not for some of you, given the whole comments thing earlier, but the only reason you wouldn't die in a springlock suit is because you're a main character and need to be around for the story. And then you're just in agonizing pain for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, the only people who have su survived a springlock failure, well, confirmed, is William. So, yeah, yeah, and you know, he's like the main antagonist of the game and was only able to survive since the spirit of a victim was keeping him alive. And in the books, William also ended up getting springlocked before, um, but then got out of the suit since Dave Miller, who was revealed to be William, has scars from a previous springlock failure from before he becomes Springtrap in the books. So the only one who can ever really survive seems to be William, and he's survived it twice. Uh, anyone else is boned, uh, and personally, I'd rather not die by having millions of small metal bits. Uh, and several dozen large ones shoved into my body, uh, trying to replace my body, I would rather die peacefully in my sleep uh, with Chica's hand around my throat. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been in Charmaine Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.